Hello, everybody. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to In the Trenches. It's been a while, but we're in the midst of a victory Monday, which is a good thing. It's been a long time since the Buccaneers had a victory. Um, in watching that game yesterday, I'm just going to say this. While the game's going on, you write notes, good, bad, and indifferent, and I evaluate all games the same, whether you win or lose, okay? And that's important in your success moving forward. You can't just say, we won, that's good. You can't do that because if you play like that against San Francisco on the road, you're going to lose a football game. I hope everybody understands that. The Buccaneers have to start getting better in certain avenues of their game to start consistently winning football games. What I love to hear is one game and all the woes me is gone. It's just, it's one game. Listen, Tennessee used to be a tough out. Tennessee is three and six. Tennessee just lost their eighth straight road game. They ain't a tough out no more. Okay, that's not, you're supposed to win that football game. After watching that game, the Buccaneers are better than Tennessee. They're better. Tennessee, I didn't like their scheme. I didn't think they were that tough. Um, there was a couple of times where Simmons got after you know a rookie Malk, but other than that, I didn't see a lot of mayhem in there. Uh, I didn't see anything the Buccaneers couldn't handle. Tennessee didn't impress me. Levis, to me, looked just baffled. Like, he just... Because... Considering what Stroud did to us, and he keeps on doing to everybody, um, you have to start looking. This kid has, a, is, has the best start for anybody's ever. Like, Peyton Manning didn't start like this, and Dan Marino didn't start like this. This kid is doing some stupid stuff right now. But that Lebers kid was completely baffled yesterday, and I had one of my boys hit me up at halftime. He goes, you're not scared of this game? I go, nope. The quarterback, he not going to figure it out. That looked like an old-school Buccaneer defense against a rookie quarterback, okay? Not like we saw the week before. But you have to evaluate all games the same, okay? Because there's some things that we're consistently doing. Every once in a while, we'll win a football game. When you consistently do this, you're not going to consistently win, okay? Let's just get that straight. Baker Mayfield, all right? Baker Mayfield, if you say he sucks, you're right. If you say he's great, you're right. If you say he's good, you're right. If you say he's, I, I don't know if there's a wrong answer. I really don't. Because Baker Mayfield shows you a little of everything every single game. Every single game, Baker Mayfield will make you go, that's the reason why he's not the guy. He'll also do a couple things where you go, Jesus, look at that. Or this guy's making us look better. Or this guy's not making those long throws. Or this guy, that was an amazing throw. You see how it keeps on going up and down? But that's the way his game goes. It goes up and down, all right? And at the end of it, we're just good enough to beat the teams that we beat. Because if we go to San Francisco and get throttled, what have we done this year other than beat the teams we should beat? That's it. But he's still missing balls down the field. The ball to Mike Evans, the, the deep ball, the post, that's a touchdown if you throw it five more yards. You have to make that throw. Mike Evans, not a big deal. You dropped a couple balls yesterday because you still end up with 140-something yards and six catches. Great fantasy game uh, numbers. But you drop balls in big games and we lost. But you keep on dropping the big ball. There was two big ones yesterday. When I mean big, I mean big. And let me say what Mike Evans said after the game. God bless him for his honesty, because I, I think he was being as honest as he could. Mike Evans could probably stand in front of the jugs machine and close his eyes and catch it from the sound. He, he's done that much repetition. He brought the best hands you've ever seen. But there's times where Mike Evans loses concentration, and he just told us that. He told us in a press conference. He goes, well, I was too worried about who I was going to give the football to. I got what I deserved. And then somebody's questioning it. What do you mean? That's not true. He just told you it was true. He just he just told you that was true. So Mike Evans sometimes have lapses of concentration. He's a Hall of Fame football player. You know who else? I mean, Michael Jordan had lapses of concentration. LeBron James has lapses of concentration. Kobe Bryant had lapses of concentration at times. 
when you're a quarterback, it's 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 magnified. See what I'm saying? Now, just saying now, this football team, you just beat a team you're supposed to beat. And I'm I, I'm listening to the narrative. Narrative switches every week. Last week we were terrible. This week we're good. It doesn't work that way. What we are is a team that's clawing out of a hole. That's all we are right now. What we are is a team that's won one out of five games. That's all we are right now, okay? Carlton Davis was out yesterday. Not a great look. It's not because we looked good yesterday in the defensive backfield for the most part. Could have been six picks. We robbed Antoine Winfrey. We robbed Antoine Winfrey Jr. at least two. He should have had three easily. They were just like coming in his lap. And I think uh, Levante David on one. I'm not sure somebody else did on the other. But he could have. He was everywhere. Okay, Antoine Winfrey Jr. It's not a coincidence when your ball hits your hands hit the ball all the time. He's he's around the football all the time. I think it's a beautiful thing. Obviously, he's going to have to be re-signed. If that's easy or not, I will see. He's a guy that could maybe be a franchise guy, whether he likes that or not. That's probably the situation he'll be in. Tristan Wirfs, who went down again yesterday. I hate to see Tristan on the field, down on the field. As somebody who had more high ankle sprains than anybody in the Tampa Bay area, probably I put myself up, I had more high ankle sprains than anybody. Once you get that first high ankle sprain, it never goes away. And you can see he's fighting through it right now. He's fighting through the high ankle sprains, but they don't go away, yo. They don't go away, ever. My high ankle sprains are still not gone. Still not gone. I don't have any base to my ankles right now because I sprained them so many times. Tristan Wirth, get through the season, brother, and strengthen those things up because you can see that's bothering him, okay? Old boy put a move on him yesterday, and they didn't replay it. He twisted his ankle, but he didn't twist his ankle and get hurt. He he twisted his ankle because of the move. A guy put a shake move on him. He looked at his head and, and twisted, rolled over his ankle. That was the worst play I've ever seen Tristan Worst be part of. That was the worst play I've seen. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna have to go back and check that one because he got shook. Okay, shook. But in the most, for the most part, I thought Tristan played well, even after he got he got banged up. The offensive line, you know, we, we never run the ball like I would like to run the ball, never. I, it's hard to grade the offensive line because they're not really put in a situation to, to run the football effectively because we don't really try. And, you know, we, we gave up a couple sacks here and there, but it wasn't, wasn't, I don't think it was that bad. Baker didn't have to be an escape artist yes, yesterday. So for the most part, I, I, I can't complain. A couple times, Simmons overpowered Malk, but that's what happens, people. He's a rookie. That's, what, that's what's going to happen, all right? This football team, once again, hearing the narrative of people speaking on sports radio and you know after the game and stuff like that, everybody's talking like the offense is fixed. You know, this... I think that we had, in the first seven plays, it was four yards of offense. This team never comes out the box offensively. Uh, have, you, have you noticed that? This offense never, I don't, I don't know if we had more than one touchdown in the first quarter this year. That's game planning, all right? That's on Canales. But we don't scare nobody coming out the, out the tunnel. Nobody. I right? watch some teams in Kansas City, those guys drive down the field, boom, 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 score, Boy, it, it puts a lot of pressure on our defense. I mean, a lot of pressure, all right? So defensively, you're just not going to play that again. <laughs> you're just not. So you, we, can, we can gas up our defense for that, but I haven't looked at the standings and the ratings. Before the Houston game, our defense was ranked 20th. Before the Houston game. And we had two two games worth of offense in that Houston game. Yesterday was good. But we're not ranked that high defensively. I mean, we could we could stop saying we have a good defense. We're just we, we're not that ranked that high. As far as rushing the passer, we get sacks, but we're not a great rushing team. We're just not. All right? Vita Vea got a sack on left tackle who 
I, I had Tony Mayberry here, and I go, look at this. He, he clearly thought it was a stunt because he set, it was the worst set I've ever seen on anybody. He just basically left the, left his shoulder wide open Vito Vea to just walk straight to the quarterback, okay? You, you got to love that, you're Vito Vea. The other sacks, you know, one was by Shaq Barrett where uh, um, uh, Levis was tripping. And the rest of the game, uh, I, I believe Yaya Diaby had one, was kind of a coverage sack. We don't put consistent pressure on the quarterback, and it's going to get you in trouble. And it has this year already. What do you mean? I mean, you play one good game defensively, and everybody thinks that's what we are. No, we, we're somewhere in between yesterday and that game against Houston. We're somewhere in the middle there. We're not as bad as that game against Houston, but we're not as good as we were yesterday. I mean, we, we've had many games to do it. We're halfway through the season now. This is what we are. And what we are is a 20-something ranked defense, all right? Offensively, we didn't have that many points on the board until a, a, a 70-yard, you know, screen pass. I don't know if it's that long, but pretty damn long. Great play call in a great situation. But early in the game, we weren't moving that ball. That's going to get you in trouble in a lot of games, okay? You play uh, San Francisco or you're playing Seattle's or whoever we have left, and you take you two quarters to get moving and you're down 17 nothing or 17 to 3 that's tough sledding for any defense seriously so as buccaneer fans i think we all have to enjoy a victory on a victory monday we have to do that but once again take it with a grain of salt and look at what we did and what we didn't do cuz some things we didn't some things we just weren't good enough all right the mike evans drops are not good enough i know he knows that Okay, you lost concentration, but you cannot lose concentration in that situation, right? Everybody would look so much better and felt so much better. Listen, Mike Evans came back and 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 scored a touchdown anyways on an unbelievable, you know, effort play. But you can see he was mentally off a little bit all game. On one of the first catches he had in the sideline, he caught the ball for first down and he throws the ball down and. Uh, that's a weird emotion after you catch the ball. So he's, he's very frustrated. And, you know, it's it's tough sometimes when, you, when you're frustrated like that and you're showing it, and it's tough on a quarterback. Now the quarterback's looking, and sometimes he takes a little extra pressure on him to get you the ball, and sometimes that's just not good for, it's not good for anybody. The interception that Baker Mayfield threw, any quarterback should be sick to the stomach to throw that interception. I mean, if you just take that play, if you just take that, play, it was, the throw was so bad that when when people say he played well, I, it's hard for me because that throw was bad. The second it left his hand, I was like, no. I mean, three dudes could have intercepted that one easily. It, it just, it's unwarranted. Don't know why you're throwing that ball. Now, the other thing is, three people are on one guy. What's happening on the rest of the field? What's happening everywhere? You have some pretty good receivers one-on-one. -on -one. What made you throw it there? What made you throw it there? Once again, yesterday we figured it out despite making that bad bone bonehead throw. But that same bonehead throw has hurt us early in the season. And we still lost more games than we've won, unfortunately. All right? Palmer, I say dropped the ball across the middle. You know, it wasn't the best throw in the world, but you want to know why a lot of receivers get don't get drafted that high because he's a five foot ten wide receiver. If he was Mike Evans, Mike Evans probably didn't even have to jump that much because Mike Evans is that much longer. But coming across, we expect Palmer to make those tough catches. We talked about the catch and the drop in the end zone. Evans had another drop on a slant play early in the, in the game. My goodness, that was a big play. He knew he should have had that. Still dropped it. It's tough because I think Baker played probably better than his statistics. It's just that one decision. Got to get that decision out. That's enough. That's enough to lose games because we're still not scoring an astronomical amount of points. You scored 20 points. You scored a bunch of points last week, and then 39 in the previous three. It's not a lot of points, everybody. 20 points is, you know, is good to beat the Titans on the road when the Titans are on the road.
because they don't beat anybody. Don't think it's going to be good enough to beat San Francisco, who just figured it out yesterday. I just don't know if it's going to be good enough. The play of the game had to be Tristan Worst picking up the fumble and rumbling. I love to see offensive linemen do their thing. Do your thing, Tristan. Baker Mayfield has to go down. I if I swear to God, if, if you listen to In the Trenches every week, every week I'm sitting here and I'm begging for Baker Mayfield to go down. On the ball where he almost fumbled and the ball pop, popped out and Tristan picked it up, you can't take that hit no more. Baker, you can't take that hit anymore. Your thumb's banged up. I didn't really see Baker throw a ball after he banged his thumb up. I don't think he completed the ball after that. You can't. You got to stop taking licks like that. On the one where Tristan Worst picked it up, he got hit from behind and the front, and they bent him over, and the ball, it's too much. It is way too much, all right? JTS has a funny way of undoing stuff. Last week, he gets an interception, gets tackled cleanly, and throws the football at somebody and gets a 15-yard penalty. He undid it. This week, one of the first plays, he makes a, a tackle for loss. I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, all right. And he lined up offsides twice. What the hell are you lining up offsides for? You don't get a good jump. I understand that Shaq Barrett line, should line up offsides, but not you. You don't get a good jump. Once again, every game I watch, everybody has a guy. We don't have a guy. I just did a podcast, and they were talking. They were like, well, what about Vita Vea? And I go, so our 360-pound Samoan nose guard is our pass rusher? And what other situation has that worked? What defense was that? It's aesthetically it's off, okay? It's, aesthetically it's off because I know you guys want to sit back and enjoy the victory, and you can still do it, but aesthetically it still doesn't look right to me. I see problems with them lining up defensively. This is halfway through the freaking football season, and you're having problems lining up de- de- defensively? Tennessee's not a good football team, all right? And if, if that's our measuring stick, then we're, we're in big, big trouble. I saw a lot of stuff that, that, that can turn into something beautiful as well. There were six interceptions out there yesterday. We only, I mean, we only got one. There were six out there. Easy. That's good. That means it's going to turn into that eventually. It, it has to. Eventually, all those tip balls and defended balls and uh, uh, defensive uh, uh, lockups defensively. We, we look, uh, Dean, I brought Dean up last week as somebody we should keep and somebody on social media goes, oh, I don't like Dean. Boy, if Dean was on the freaking market, Dean will get paid, I tell you right now. A big lockdown corner, he will get paid, guaranteed. You better keep Jamel Dean. Other than that, there's just not a lot of names that I think are going to be on this defense in a couple of years. I just, I don't. And, you know, my one of my business partners here, Tom Ponzo, is a Giants fan, and they know where they stand. We're, as Buccaneer fans, we don't really know where we stand because we're not, we're good enough to not give up on, but we're bad enough to say, well, that's not going to work. I mean, what's what are they going to do? What What have they done to this point to make you think that, they're going to go on a run right now. I just, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. Well, they're running into the San Francisco 49ers, which can end up real, 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 real quick. Now, let's go back to Baker Mayfield. This is what he is, everybody. This is what he's been his whole career. He, he's a guy who can be up, down, indifferent. Up, down, indifferent. Up, like that's his whole career. It's usually never too bad. It's never too too great you can win with that but to talk about that being the future i'm not sure that's the direction and listening to the shows people can't help themselves but to be begging for kyle trask okay i'm gonna say this about kyle trask if kyle trask was a seventh round quarterback from indiana nobody would be saying his name because he's a high draft pick from University of Florida, that's why we're hearing his name. And that's all. There's no other reason to be talking about Trask's name anymore. See, I'm being serious about that. If he was good, 
or had potential to be good, he'd have been in there. He'd have been in there. We, we, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be here. And I heard people saying this. Well, if we lose this game, if we lose this game against Tennessee, then let's we might as well put Trask in. So you're gonna put a lesser quarterback in because of what? A quarterback is just one position, everybody. Can anybody say with the good mind, whether you're a Baker Mayfield fan or not, that Baker Mayfield's a problem this year? Can anybody tell me that Baker Mayfield's a problem this year? So if you put Kyle Trask in, what the hell is that telling Mike Evans? What is that telling Chris Godwin? That you're putting a lesser player in, in the middle of the season while we're still a contender? Even if they lost to Tennessee and Baker Mayfield played just like he played, some people be saying he didn't play well enough. It's not about winning and losing. That's what he is. It's what he is. That's what he's been. He's been okay. Baker Mayfield at the end of it has quite a bit of good film. Somebody compared Baker Mayfield to Mike Glennon the other day. Mike Glennon never took a team to the playoffs. Mike Glennon never looked good three games in a row. Never. Not once. Stop that. I'm not a huge Baker Mayfield fan, but I know what it is. And you can win with Baker Mayfield. There's no doubt about that. Here's another thing. Everybody's ready to fire Canales. He's a rookie. Okay, Malk Lagarde, he's a rookie. Let's bench him. For what? So he doesn't grow? So Canales, you're going to fire him after, what, nine games? Does that make any sense? Well, I don't like his play calling. Well, you think everybody, you think Bill Walsh was a great play caller in his first nine games? You got to start feeling things out. He's feeling things out. Do I love the play calling to this point? Nope. Did I think it was going to be great to this point? Nope, because he's a rookie. He's learning. He's making mistakes. I seen him do some things early this season that just, they didn't make any sense. I didn't see him do it again. So he's learning. But for the most part, the Bucks are learning to what they are. You guys were ready to get rid of Todd Bowles for what? What kind of what kind of uh, coach you think we're going to get here right now in this situation? You think we're going to get a, a coach with a better pedigree than Todd Bowles? Look at our situation. This is not a couple of years ago where Bruce Arians came here and there was a lot going on. There was a lot going on there now. There's a lot of the stuff going on now, but way younger and way more f- f- uh, effective. But I, I don't know if this place is all that appealing anymore. It, you know, it's funny that I hear everybody, well, we have to re-sign Mike Evans. Why? You think this Buccaneer team next year is going to contend for something? I, I don't. So what are you resigning Mike Evans for? So you think Mike Evans is going to be still effective two years from now. Mike Evans is already an anomaly as far as his effectiveness and his age. He's already an anomaly. He has no business being this good this late, and he has no business playing every game. He has no business still catching six balls for 140. He really has no business doing that. He's already an anomaly, but it's going to have to end, okay? He's like LeBron James. LeBron James is still playing good basketball. He's not quite LeBron James anymore. Well, Mike Evans is not quite Mike Evans anymore because Mike Evans used to be a top 10 wide receiver. He's not quite that anymore. Still pretty darn effective, though. Baker's thumb, I hope that's not a big deal. But if, if Baker can't sling that thing against San Francisco, San Francisco, if, well, I mean... You've watched them. San Francisco is a handful. I'm not sure where the Bucks attack. You know, they did lose three games in a row, so there's a template to beat them, which is good. But I'm not I'm not sure where the Buccaneers are able to attack the San Francisco 49ers. Where they're weak, I don't I don't think they have a weakness. I think you have to throw you have to run the football on them, and I I just I, I don't have any confidence the Buccaneers can run the football on anybody. To be honest with you, they got too many good football players to run the ball on. That pass rush is a bear, 
And offensively, you know, Brock Purdy, we keep on saying he's a system guy, but he puts up some nasty numbers, and he's a, I, I think there's something to that. Like, I don't think Brock, I don't think if we switch quarterbacks, Brock Purdy's going to impress us with this offense over here. I really don't. But I don't know if anybody's more suited for that offense than Brock Purdy right now. Healthy. Because when I see him maneuvering around offensively, it looks amazing. Some of it looks like an orchestra. And there's it's, there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of movement. Are you going to mess with McCaffrey as a runner, as a catcher, as out the backfield? Debo Samuels reverses out the backfield, screens. It's a lot of stuff. Some of it's kind of gimmicky. But some sometimes when stuff is gimmicky, it makes your linebackers think a lot, and they're all out of sorts, and that's what San Francisco was able to do. I was blessed to have uh, breakfast with John Lynch and uh, Martin Mayhew at the Combine, and I was picking John Lynch's brain a little bit, and I gave him love for constructing a, a, a team that's not dependent on a quarterback. They're not dependent on a quarterback. Their offensive line is fantastic. Their defensive line is fantastic. Their linebackers are fant they're fantastic. They got players everywhere, and they got system players on offense. And all the pieces, they make sense. They go together and they, ma and they make sense. And to me, I'm not sure Shanahan isn't the best play caller in, uh, on the planet right now. Okay? So, it's Victory Monday. We should feel good about ourselves. We got a victory. But don't rest on that, everybody. It's going to have to be better than that. I guarantee Todd Bowles is not pounding his chest today in front of everybody. He's going to go, that one's done. You better buckle up because this next one is going to be it's going to be a hoot nanny. It ain't that ain't going to be easy going to San Francisco and beating that team. Uh, I was I, I saw Warner yesterday talk about one game at a time. That's where we were messing up. We kept on looking at the future. Now they're back, they're back focused, so they do not believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can go to their house and beat them anytime soon. And I'm not sure the Buccaneers have done enough this year for them to be confident enough to go to San Francisco and win that game. Do yourself a favor. I don't have time to do it, but look up how many times the Buccaneers have won in San Francisco. I guarantee it's not many. I tried it a couple times, and it didn't turn out all that well. One was close, but just didn't turn out that well. If anybody ever wants to contact me, it's Ian underscore Beckles on social media. Please make sure you're listening to my other podcasts as well. Uh, Brooks and Beckles I did with uh, Tony Dungy on Friday, and uh, I'll have mental intimacy with the lovely Dr. Gina as well. Uh, I enjoy uh, Victory Mondays. Let's hope our Buccaneers... Like, hey, if we win next week, I may come on here with some pom-poms or something like that. I don't own any, so I'm going to have to buy them on Amazon if, that win, if they win Sunday night. So we'll see. Maybe with some pom-poms on Monday. Everybody enjoy your victory, and uh, please stay out of trouble. Peace out. <laughs>